Do you want to make your own podcast? Spotify has a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. And this is the platform that I use because it makes it so simple to record and distribute your podcast all in one place using your cell phone. What you need to do is download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com backslash podcasters to get started. Hello, my name is Katherine Moore, social worker, mom, coffee lover, and founder of Social Workers Rise, where we inspire social workers to connect, expand their knowledge, and change more lives than they ever thought possible. I'm so excited you found my podcast. We will talk everything social work on every level from micro to macro. We will hear the stories of social workers who are doing big things, learn new skills, and most importantly, give you actionable steps to make a difference today. Let's go. Hi, Maria. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me on Social Workers Rise. How are you doing today? I am doing good. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk to you. I know that we have... So a little background on, on how Marie and I, we've never actually met. We are Facebook friends <laughs> and we met in a group that, um, <clears throat> that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but so your, your name for the people listening, Maria, a, a gear, a, can you, I'm sorry. I butcher names all the time. Can you say your last name? That's okay. Yes. It's Aguirre de Sosa. Yes, thank you. <laughs> And so you have a social work degree. Are you licensed? I am. I'm fully licensed. Awesome. And so you're working right now. You're at a um, dialysis center in Florida. Is that right? Correct. Okay, yes. cool. Can you, so can you just tell us a little bit about how you got started? Like what, what made you want to become a social worker in the first place? What's your story? So um, it's funny because I initially um, was going to pursue my master's in sociology so that I could do research. Um, It was about a year before I got, um, I was finishing up my bachelor's in sociology that um, I was working at a center for um, children of low income. I was a center director. Um, What we would do is we would assist them in making sure that their homework gets done um, and just, um, you know, make sure that they would get a system so that they could graduate high school. Our whole goal was to, to get them through middle school, get them through high school and get them graduated so that they would at least have the college diploma, the, excuse me, the high school diploma. Um, so it was actually a year before I finished my bachelor's degree that I was told by somebody, you'd be a great social worker. Um, so I started looking into the social work degree. I started looking into, um, you know, what that entailed. And I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be a social worker. I want to help people. I want to help people who need the most help. And so, um, I ended up applying to, um, the master's degree uh, program at university of central Florida. And, um, it was basic, the best decision that I could have ever made it. I, I'm so glad that that person said that to me because the social work, there's no, there was no profession um, for me, like the social work profession. I feel like that too. What do you think that person saw in you that made them say, you know, you would be a great social worker? Um, I've always been kind of the, the helper, the one that stands up for, for the person that, you know, was being bullied, the one that would go the extra mile. Um, It's just always been my personality. Um, You know, I think that's what the person saw in me, that I, that I always wanted to make a difference and, and help those people who, you know, are the least fortunate. Um, So 
that's what I believe the person yeah. in me. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that story. Thank you so much. Um, and so, right. So what do you do for work right now? Like in the dialysis center, like what, what do you do exactly? So, um, right now, basically I, I'm a dialysis social worker. So what I do is, um, is I, I, I make sure that my patients are taken care of, um, you know, as far as needing any resources, um, you know, needing, um, uh, any, uh, assistance, you know, with, uh, with food, with, um, utilities. So I do a lot of referrals, a lot of case management. Um, I do a lot of supportive counseling to my patients because, you know, sitting on a dialysis chair, um, and dealing with end stage renal disease isn't very easy. They usually, um, come to us three times a week for about three to four hours. So that, that can get, um, very difficult for them on top of, um, you know, all the medical conditions that they're dealing with, because most of them aren't really dealing with just um, end stage renal disease. They're dealing with things like diabetes, high blood pressure, um, heart problems. So um, I help them navigate this, the, the medical system. Um, I do a lot of transplant referrals so that, you know, those individuals that are um, in my center can, can, can pursue transplant and get back to normal life. Um, so that's, that's kind of pretty much the summary of it. I mean, there's a lot more things that we, we all do, but, but that's pretty much the summary. Oh, wow. Yeah. You do a lot. I know that I talk to people who are on dialysis and it's definitely, it's definitely a really, really hard experience for them, um, and their families too, because they have to work out like, who's going to take mom to dialysis and who's, you know, are we going to stay there? Are we going to pick her up and all of those things. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So, okay, good. Um, so then we actually met on a Facebook group called uh, Social Workers for Title Protection. And you spearheaded this, and I really admire you for, for starting this. Um, I don't know why it's such like a controversial issue. I think as social workers, we, we don't like to hurt anyone's feelings, um, which which is a good and a bad thing, um, because we also need to stick up for ourselves. But you started this, um, you know, back only a couple of months ago. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, like, when did you start it? And what, what motivated you and inspired you to do that? Um, the group was actually started March 4th, 2020. Um, so it, yes, uh -huh. this year. Um, so it was, um, you know, it's always been a pet peeve of mine um, that, you know, most of us go to school, we work very hard, you know, we take our tests, we study the code of ethics, we study, you know, our, for our exams, you know, and we go out into the field and then there are people who do not have any sort of background in social work. Um, do not follow our code of ethics, do not have the amount of education that we have, um, are out there calling themselves social workers. Um, it's always, it's always bothered me, you know, because as I said, I mean, we, we study very hard. We follow a strict code of ethics. We, we have gone through the work and, and that is so that we can serve our clients you know, using those skills that we learned in school, using the code of ethics and provide them with the best services that we can provide them. And then somebody comes out, you know, that does not have a social work degree and says they're a social worker. And unfortunately, you know, I'm, I'm not saying everybody is like that, but they do something to hurt our clients. And then it's the social work profession that takes the responsibility for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Even if they don't intend to hurt them, it's just one of right. those, they're not trained in it. So, you know, how can you know something right. that you're not trained in? Right. And so that was, that has been my frustration since I graduated with my MSW and I almost actually thought about leaving the field. It's actually, I've actually thought about it several times because of this, because of the bad rap that social workers have, mostly because people who don't have social work degrees make these mistakes intentionally or not intentionally and give us a bad name. 
And so on in January, I was actually contemplating leaving the field and becoming a realtor. I actually looked into the schooling. I looked into everything that I had to do. And I was like, you know what? Let me take a minute to think about it. I, I thought about it, thought about it. And this is when the pandemic started. And, you know, my clients started needing, you know, assistance even more than what they already needed, more assistance, more support. And I was just reminded of why I am a social worker and why I'm here. And it is to serve them, Mm -hmm. you know. And if I wasn't there, who would be there to serve them, you Mm -hmm. know. March 4th, I was like, you know what, I'm going to create a group called social workers for title protection and we're going to advocate for title protection for all social workers because we deserve it because our clients deserve it and I don't know if this is going to get anywhere but you know what we're going to go ahead and do it so March 4th is when I created the group Um, today is April 20th so it's been just a little over a month and we are at 925 members I believe oh my gosh so close to a (laughs) thousand yes yes so we have so far been able to write to the NASW whether you are a member or not we kind of stopped caring whether you're a member (laughs) or not or a former member and we're all just writing to the NASW we've written to our representatives Um, you know we've created a petition that has met the goal and that's going to be sent to our um, representative organizations the ASWB the CSWE and the NASW and we are just advocating for the profession um, so can we can we break down those acronyms real quick? Yes. Um, the CSWE is the Council on Social Work Education. The ASWB is the Association of Social Work Boards. And the NASW is the National Association of Social Workers. So it's all the organizations that represent us. Um, it is the organizations that um, dictate our education and our licensing Um, And it's the organizations that should be taking the lead in making sure that we have title protection. Yeah. And I know that this is not a new topic. Like we have been advocating for this for a long time. I know I myself went up to lobby days with NASW California. Um, Let me see when that must have been, I graduated in 2015. So that must have been either like 2015 2014 maybe even 2013 because I did the three-year program like back then we were advocating for title protection and I know this wasn't a new topic at that time either so like what what is going on and what are the barriers to to having this done like what are people like what's what's the problem (laughs) what have you found well Um, You know, I talked to actually, I actually talked to a couple of social workers from California because um, part of the reason why I, I'm actually very interested in California um, because I know that back in 2013, this was attempted and it did fail. Maybe that's when Um, it was in 2013 that I went up there. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, probably. Um, It, the first thing is it has to be done by state by state. So you know, you have to get those organizations that are in the state to support you. Um, I think that the problem is that, at least in California anyway, that a lot of the public health organizations like the counties and, um, you know, the Department of Health and these places that are hiring social workers, all their contracts, from what I understand, are written um you know saying social workers and not requiring you know for you to have your bachelor's in social work or your master's in social work or your license Mm -hmm. um so it would mean that all these organizations would have to change all of their um paperwork all of their i guess um policies um i think another barrier has been that um social workers we advocate for everybody but we don't advocate for ourselves Mm -hmm. we And it's part of who we are, which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because we are not, we can't, how do we expect to take care of others when we don't take care of ourselves, you know? And a lot of what I've noticed is, is, you know, in, in social media groups where there's a lot of social workers um, present, 
where they're discussing these issues is that some social workers are like, well, we didn't get into it for that. We didn't get into it for the recognition or the pay. We got into it to help people. Yes, yes, we did. But that doesn't mean that we don't deserve title protection, that we don't deserve to have less student debt, that we don't deserve to have, you know, better pay, better work conditions, that we don't deserve to have the respect from the community because we do amazing things for the community. Mm -hmm. So those are, you know, I'm trying to, what, what we're trying to do here in the group is just kind of change that, oh, well, I have to advocate for everybody else and then forget about myself. Because I'm a big believer that if you're stressed, if you're you know underpaid, if you're overworked, um, if you're undervalued, you're gonna burn out. Mm -hmm. Which happens to so many social workers. I mean, it happened to me within four years. I was burning out. I was thinking about leaving the field, and I know I'm not the only one that feels this way. Um, so I think those are the barriers. I think. Um, we need more people to get involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to speak to, you know, people say, you know, oh, we didn't get into it for that. You know, I agree because I had no idea when I got into social work. I just wanted to help people. But at the same time, our burnout rate is so high, like after three or four years. And it was the same for me after three or four years. Once I, I was like, okay, I'm not changing the world like I set out to do. There's this system that is broken that we have to operate in. And it really, really sucks. And it's overwhelming. And I feel like I am not doing enough. And so, yeah, we don't get into it for that. But we also are not staying in social work. And that is a problem, too, because eventually after we, you know, start working we get to the point, or at least I did, I get to the point where I was like, okay, I'm working all of this. I have this student loan debt. I have my master's degree. And <clears throat> you look at other professions, when they have master's degree, they're making $100,000 out the door, you know, starting. And we are still looking at, I mean, it depends on where you at are, but, you know, anywhere from like 50 to 60,000 starting with a master's. And it's just and not even that, but I mean, nurses, nurses yeah. with two years degree, they're making what we're making with master's degree. Yes. Why? Because they're out there advocating for themselves. Yep. Nurses got into the nurses got into their career to take care of people too, but they know that they have to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. I see nurses advocating in Washington all the time. I don't see social workers doing it. And it's actually one of the things that the NASW um, director of policy told me because I reached out to her. Um, last month, um, and she told me, she says, you know, I, I don't see social workers organizing for change. Mm. Um, so it's time, I think it's time that we wake up and we say, hey, yes, we are in it to help people, but yes, we are in it for ourselves too, and we deserve to be recognized, we deserve to be paid well. Um, it, it's just time. Yes. Oh my gosh, Marie, you gave me chills. It is time for us to step up, for social workers to rise up make some change, get our voices together, collaborate, create these relationships that we're doing and, and show up and do some changes. I mean, even if we have to take some time off, like it's worth it. We could not continue to work ourselves to the bone and be like, somebody else is going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it. Nobody. Like we all have to do it. Every single one of us. And yes. my, I think both of our husbands are in, in real estate. I hope it's okay. I share that. Um, That's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I sometimes will go to his events and functions and every single month, if not more often, they have policy updates on what is going on in the real estate world in policy. And when they ask their realtors to respond, to call, to write letters, to go to the offices, the realtors are there. Like rent increases, like forget about, like realtors are there. They're so powerful. Same thing with the NRA. I'm not as familiar with them, but I mean, I know that they're very powerful too. Um, yes. And so it's like, this won't be the, we won't be the first, um, the first profession to do this. We might even be one of the last to kind of like, you know, get it together and, and advocate for ourselves. And I feel like it's really just the start of it. 
Yeah. And it's really funny because we are a profession that prides itself in advocacy, Mm -hmm. but we're not advocating for ourselves and we're not holding our representing organizations accountable. You know, I've followed the National Association of Social Workers for a long time, and I wasn't a member until this year, until I I decided that I was going to go ahead and yes, I'm going to join, but I'm going to hold them accountable and I'm going to send them letters and I'm going to ask him to advocate for myself. For a long time, I saw the National Association of Social Workers advocating for those who are, you know, um, less fortunate than we are, advocating for immigration issues, advocating for poverty, advocating for domestic abuse. And yes, I love that. I really Mm -hmm. do. But they need to advocate for us, too, because our profession, the way that I believe is falling apart because nobody's advocating for us. And it's our responsibility as social workers, whether we have joined the NASW or not, um, to hold the NASW, to hold the Association of um, Social Work Boards um, and the Council on Social Work Education all accountable so that they standardize the the scope of practice and give us title protection, which we deserve. And I really like the way that you are doing that, that you are a member because you know, it really takes, and coming from a macro perspective here, like it really takes a lot of people to be able to make change. And, you know, if it's just Maria, if you're, if it's just you like, Hey, title protection, you know, they're going to be like, Oh, Maria again. But if it's the collective group of people that are saying the same thing, that's when they're going to take notice. And that's when they're going to be like, okay, let's make this a priority because, you know, it's, I would imagine, and I'm, I've never run a big organization like that, but I would imagine if all, if your people are not concerned about it, you know, why, if it's not a priority for them, why should it be a priority for you? Same mm-hmm. thing like with the president. If yes. it's not a priority for the American people, then it's not going to be a presidential priority. Yes, yes, yes. You said it. And that is how the organization works. And that is part of the reason why I stress so much that, you know, in the group when we say send the letter to the NASW asking them to do this asking them to put social workers first it's so so important that all of us do it because Mm -hmm. the more that they see that we are you know requesting that they do this the more that they are going to use their powers because they're very powerful organization to make sure we get this done Mm -hmm. yeah I love it. I'm really excited to see what happens. And I feel like this is just the beginning. So in addition to, and I'm part of the group, so I know that you've posted, you, you make it ridiculously like stupid, easy for us to do this. So you type out the entire letter, the template that we can use. We input our information. We can personalize it if we would like. And then we just literally just email it, right? Yes. And that is the intention because I know, you know, my position as a social worker right now is, is what I would say somewhat comfortable. So this is something that I can do, but I do realize that not everybody else can do it. So (laughs) my intention is to try to make it easy to where all you have to put is your credentials, the name of the organization or the lawmaker that you're reaching out to and then just bam, send it out, you know, because I understand that there are social workers who are, you know, overworked, um, you know, underpaid and they just don't have time to do this. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the intention behind, you know, making the templates, just send it, send it, send it and let's get it out and let's be heard. Yes. Yes. I love that. Is there anything else that we didn't talk about as far as like, like what title protection is, why we need it? I think ideally what I would like to see and what we would like to see as a group is that nobody calls themselves a social worker unless they hold, you know, a bachelor's in social work, a master's in social work or higher, you know, Mm -hmm. then we're talking about licenses and, you know, your PhD in social work. The reason being is because, you know, as we talked about earlier, we, we, we go to schools accredited by the Council on Social Work Education. You know, we, 
we study evidence-based practice, we follow a strict code of ethics, we are all held accountable to that. Somebody who is not a social worker is not held accountable to that. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the biggest difference comes. And we practice differently too. I mean, social workers, we look at the whole person and not, and other people don't, don't practice like that. You know what I mean? So ideally what we would like to see is if you don't have a bachelor's in social work or a master's in social work or higher, you should not be able to call yourself a social worker. There's no exceptions, no loopholes, nothing. Love it. Love it. I have a question for you. So all I know is social work. I got my, my BSW, my MSW, and you mentioned that you took, you were a sociology major. So like, what would be, since you have a little bit of knowledge of that, that major, like, what would be the difference between like a sociology person major coming in and getting a social work job? Like what would be the problem with that? So uh, as a sociology major, you kind of study systems and you study poverty and you study how all of these systems affect the person, but you don't study, you know, how to treat the person. You don't study how, um, you know, how to serve the, the, the person. You don't, um, you don't even follow the code of ethics. I mean, that's mm-hmm. one that's given. You're not held accountable by the code of ethics. So, you know, as a sociology or psychology or even education major, it's it's a very different career path. It's it's um, while there are things that are similar, as I said, you don't study how to treat the person, you don't study how to serve them, you don't study you know case management, none of that. So um, I think that's where the biggest difference comes in. Um, and I, as a sociology major, I would have never been prepared to do a, a CPS a. Ch- children protective services or adult protective services job ever I mean I just there's just no way that I could have done it but as Mm -hmm. a social worker as a social worker because I know um, how to identify signs of abuse which is something that you know usually sociology majors don't don't really go into that Um, because I know how to identify signs of abuse because I know how to approach people because I've been taught how to approach people because I know some you know uh, therapy techniques um, then I know how I can serve these people. So when you are a bachelor's in sociology and you're working a job like Children Protective Services or Adult Protective Services, there's room for mistakes there, you know? Not saying that social workers are perfect. We're not. But we have mm-hmm. a lot more training and a lot more expertise in, in, in looking at those signs and, and looking at the person and treating them. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I don't, know, I don't know why this stuck with me for so long, but when I was looking at majors to pick, I, I remember I was in the career center and I was looking at the outlines and the summaries of each different majors. I had a whole wall full and I had sociology in one hand and social work in the other and reading the descriptions and the types of jobs that they do. And I, I don't know why I, I like this analogy stuck in my head and I, I don't want to insult anybody, but this is what I thought of that sociology was kind of like looking at a at an aquarium of fish and studying like how they interact yes. and you know the water and and all of that stuff and like oh man like the fish are 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 not thriving very well like like what do we do but the social work would be actually getting in there with the fish yes yes And being in there with them and like, oh, okay, this is what's going on, like talking or, you know, not talking, whatever, (laughs) and getting in there with them, like in their environment and knowing like how to respond and how to actually like interact and deal with them in person instead of just looking at them from the outside. Yes. And understanding the environment, you know, so understanding the environment so that you know how to proceed and what sorts of treatments and what sorts of resources the person needs, you know, a mm-hmm. sociologist isn't trained to do that. And I tell you, because, you know, as I said, I have, I have my bachelor's in sociology and most sociologists go into research. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's a huge difference. I mean, huge difference, which is how I can see how some of these mistakes where children are being neglected or adults are being neglected and, and these people are not seeing the signs. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily doing it on purpose. Obviously not. Right. They just don't have the training to do it. They really don't. 
Um, but I, you know, I refuse to take responsibility for that as a social worker. I will take responsibility for a social worker, another social worker, another colleague, but I refuse to take responsibility for somebody who is not trained in social work, calling themselves a social worker, and then unintentionally or intentionally hurting a client. I just won't do it. Right. Yep. I agree. I, I totally agree. So what can people do right now who feel that social workers definitely need title protection? Like how can they get involved? What should we do? So the first thing I would say is if you have social media, join us in the social workers for title protection USA. It's just a simple search. Um, there is, as I said, 925 of us on Facebook, on Facebook. And that is just a little bit over a month. Um, you know, at the macro level, we have been um, reaching out to our organizations, holding them accountable by sending letters. We have been reaching out to our senators and our representatives. Um, we have been signing petitions. All of this we have been doing already for a month. And uh, the NSW has and the ASWB both are listening. They are watching us. So it's very important that if you want to join us, if you can join us, and you can be one more person that we can add another letter, then join us, please. Um, I also encourage everybody to educate their communities about what social workers do. You know, social media has made it so much easier for us to connect. Um, social media has made it so much easier for us to share things. So one of the things that I created is, is a page called the Social Work Advocate, where I share, I look for every single day, I look for articles that show what social workers are doing, um, good things that social workers are doing. Um, and I share them there. And I ask that you copy the link or share it and educate your community, educate your friends on what social workers do. Um, at the individual mi micro level, what I would say is educate your coworkers. Your co your patients, educate um, anybody that you run into about what social workers do and what and what we are and what we stand for. I didn't know that you had the social work advocate page. I feel like I've seen you around. I just didn't know it was you. Yeah, it's me. I um, <laughs> I did it. That's awesome. It's funny. I'll tell you a funny a funny story. It, it's a funny story. I did it because I was initially sharing like you know, all of those stories that I wanted people to share on my personal Facebook, but I kind of started getting some questionable friend requests. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I was like, you know what, I'm going to call myself the social work advocate and I'm going to create this page and I'm going to ask people to share it. And this page was actually created probably, I would say three weeks ago. Um, we don't have that many followers, so please follow us if you can. And this is where we're going to keep sharing. Like today, I shared a, a, an article about these social workers who are feeding homeless kids. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head what state they're in. But what they're doing is amazing work. And people deserve to know that. People deserve to know that they can come to their social worker and that their social worker is going to do everything that they can to help them and to advocate for them. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know what we do. A lot of people think that we're child snatchers and that's not what we do, you know. So they're not coming to us. And, you know, the more that we educate the community, the more that they're going to come to us and the more that we're going to be able to help more people. Yes, I agree. People, it's interesting because people are much more likely to go to a coach, like a mental wellness coach, or as opposed to like a social worker or a therapy because they're like, oh, social worker, like, no, I'm not being abused. No, thank you. Yeah. I had some coworkers that didn't even know what a, what a, you know, a licensed clinical social worker was. I had to go back and explain it to them. And they're like, oh, well, you do that? Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I have training in that. And now they're like, okay, you know. So um, I think it's just a matter of education. And once people start seeing what we do and how much sacrifices we make for the community and how much education we have, I think the mm -hmm. whole perspective about social work is going to change. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited. Okay. So we have the social, the social, social workers for title protection, the social work advocate. Is that where people, is that the best place where people can, can get in contact with you? Is those two group? Is it a, wait, I'm sorry. One is a group, the social work for title protection. 
Um, the social work advocate, is that a page or like, where is that? That is a page. So if you search it on Facebook and just find the social work advocate, um, you'll find the page, just hit like. And then if you're looking for the group, it's social workers for title protection USA. Um, and you can find it through the social work advocates page because every once in a while I'll just post the, um, the link to the page so that, you know, people, there were some, we, actually did it was actually you who posted where did you find the group and a couple of people actually answered oh well I found it through the social work advocate so um feel free to just find a social work advocate and you'll see the link to the page there um but, awesome. but if not the group is called social workers um for title protection USA I was really happy to see on that post that there was no one route that people found us so I feel like that signifies that the word is getting around mm-hmm. and people are just kind of organically finding it and organically referring people who, who would support it. And I thought that was really cool. Yes. Very, very cool. The power, I mean, the power of social media is, is so great. And I think that's what's going to help us to move forward with title protection because now it's not just California social workers looking for title protection. It's California social workers with the backup, the whole nation's social workers. So we have the whole nation that's going to back up. We're going to go state by state. We have the whole nation that's going to back up California when the time comes. We have the whole nation that's going to back up Montana when the time comes, Minnesota when the time comes. So while people are advocating in their states, us that, you know, in the states that we are not currently um, pursuing the title protection, then we're going to be sending messages to the National Association of Social Workers, the, the um, Association of Social Work Boards, the Council of Social Work Education. We're going to be sending them messages and saying, hey, this is what we want. This is We want you to support them. And so this is what I think is going to be the answer to our title protection problem. I feel like we've just been waiting for you, Maria. <laughs> Thank you. To organize everything and to, to take the lead on this because it's um, it's a big a big task and it's not going to be done fast. Um, but you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens and and I feel that those organizations definitely do want the same thing. It's just they need all of us to support them and, and to back them up and to have their backs. Like, we want them to have our backs. We need to have their backs, True. too. I agree 100%. Yeah. So Okay. Awesome, Maria. Anything else that we didn't nope, cover? That would be it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And I'll see you around on Facebook. Same. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Social Workers Rise. If you loved us, please give us five stars and write us a little review wherever you listen to your podcast. This just helps other people just like you find us and join our community. You can also stay connected through our Instagram at Social Workers Rise. If you want to be a guest on the show, go ahead and send me a message and we'll talk more. I'll see you next time.